Hey all, today we are going to discuss about chelitis glandularis. So the term chelitis means inflammation of lips, right? So which is caused due to some glands. That's why the term chelitis glandularis, which is also known as actinic chelitis. Now the name as it suggests is a disorder of inflammation of the lips. So it is an inflammatory disorder of lip, right? It is characterized by progressive enlargement and eversion of the lower lip. So the colitis glandularis occurs on the lower lip, right? And in which the lower lip is enlarged and everted outside, right? So it is a inflammatory disease or a disorder, you can say, of the lower lip basically, right? Due to eversion of the lip, lower lip basically there is a obliteration of mucosal vermilion interface so this interface is disrupted you can say right in chelitis glandularis so the uh, alteration in labial mucosa takes place due to external factors and chronic exposure right alterations in labial mucosa such as crustation ulceration so the crusts are formed, the lips become chapped, right? Ulcers are formed on the labial mucosa because it has been exposed, right? To the external factors or environment, you can say. The term, right? The external factors such as UV rays, right? Direct sunlight, which will have direct impact on our lower lip, right? Actinic damage means due to UV rays, basically. UV rays or uh, sunlight. So the actinic damage is increased due to which alteration in labial mucosa takes place and the chelitis glandularis turns into actinic chelitis, right? That's why we will we also call chelitis glandularis as actinic chelitis, right? So the colitis glandularis disorder is basically a predisposing factor for actinic colitis as well as squamous cell carcinoma. So due to colitis glandularis can turn into actinic colitis or squamous cell carcinoma due to uh, environmental factors or external factors or trauma right so the etiology of colitis glandularis is chronic irritation right trauma you know some uh, kids have uh, problem they they keep on biting their uh, lower lip so there can be a self inflicted biting right due to which colitis glandularis has occurred right excessive wetting from compulsive licking or drying right drying of lips may be caused due to mouth breathing or asthma or many other factors right so these are the etiological factors either chronic irritation can cause colitis glandularis or trauma or excessive wetting from compulsive licking or drying of lower lip right now the clinical features of colitis glandularis so the condition is basically chronic and progressive in nature the patient will report a dentist or a physician after 3 to 12 months of onset of this disorder basically, right? The condition is more likely to be uncommon, right? The complaints of the patient vary according to nature and degree of pain. Some patients even complain of loss of elasticity of the lip. The condition can be asymptomatic and symptomatic right so in asymptomatic uh, condition there will be no pain so there is a lip swelling with clear viscous secretion which suggests that there are dilated uh, openings ductal openings right ducts of salivary glands are open in that area that's why there is a clear viscous secretion in that area right or in the symptomatic conditions, there, there will be a painful 
episodes which is associated with superative discharge even in few conditions there is a period of quiescence in which there is no sign and symptom and after that a painful episode will occur so the patient will complain that there is a recurring painful episode as well as a which is associated with superative discharge right a burning discomfort in this um, affected lip will be there right sensation of rawness will be there if you apply if uh, we apply a uh, a gentle pressure pressure on the lower lip a mucopurulent discharge will be there right so a mucopurulent exudate can be there in some conditions right in chronic cases in symptomatic conditions right the lower lip is more commonly affected than the upper lip there is an increased risk of development of scc right that is the squamous cell carcinoma squamous cell carcinoma so the can this condition can be converted into cancer due to environmental factors basically it is more common in adult males and occurs more frequently between 4th and 7th decade of between 4th and 7th decade of life right now the classification part of uh, colitis glandularis it is basically of three types right the first one is the simple type as the name suggest it is basically asymptomatic the patient will be having multiple painless papular lesions right with central depressions with central depressions and dilated canals so there will be multiple there will be multiple painless papular lesions basically right the condition is asymptomatic in this condition in this type basically now the superficial superative type which is known as bell's disease right this condition is also painless indurated swelling of the lip with shallow ulcerations and swelling will be there right the condition is known as this type is known as superficial means there will be shallow ulcerations they the ulcers will not be deep they will be shallow in this condition right and swelling is obviously there now the deep superative type deep means deep superative means there will be a discharge in this case also as there was in superficial superative type so but deep is is representing or um, is suggesting that the, it is being infected right it is also known as colitis glandularis epistematosa or myxedinitis labialis right there will be a deep seated infection in this case deep superative type so it is also involving the deeper structures i mean to say right abscess formation means pus formation will be there in this condition sinus tracts and fistulas will be seen in this condition which are having potential of scarring so they can make scar over that area also so it is it is having three uh, subtypes or types you can say simple type superficial superficial superative type and deep superative type right now the histological features of colitis glandularis glandularis so it is concerned about these glands right so the minor salivary glands are basically involved in this case right so in histological features or uh, histology we will see these minor salivary glands they can be normal or can exhibit various changes in this disorder right the atrophy that is decrease in the size of the acni can be there or distension that is swelling swelling or increase in the, uh, the size of the acni can be there right so atrophy or distension of the acni can take place in this condition ductal ectasia can be there that is 
dilation of the tubular structures ectasia means dilation of these um you know ducts can be seen in this in the histology histological features right this is uh, chronic inflammatory condition colitis term represents that it is basically inflammation of lips right so the inflammatory inflammation infiltration will be there there will be a lot of cells can be seen in this condition right so all the features of inflammation will be there basically the replacement of glandular parenchyma will take place and interstitial fibrosis can will be seen suppuration abscess will be seen in the histological slides and sinus tract will be there stromal edema hyperemia surface hyperkeratosis erosion and ulcerations these are also few features that are seen in the histology right so at a, as it is a inflammatory condition edema will be there and hyperemia will be there these are the features of inflammation only right now the differential diagnosis of uh, colitis glandularis these are squamous cell carcinoma actinic keratosis atopic dermatitis colitis granulomatosa which is also known as mischner's melkerson rosenthal syndrome which we will re read later on right and sarcoidosis right now the treatment part of colitis glandularis so the biopsy should be done to rule out whether it is a carcinoma or actinic colitis right as we know that um colitis glandularis can turn into squamous cell carcinoma so we need to do the biopsy part biopsy to rule out whether it is a carcinoma or actinic colitis right we should identify the causative agent for the uh this disorder and should eradicate it eradication is must right now to treat the acute or chronic suppuration means the abscess the infection should be treated as soon as possible so the bacterial culture should be done sensitivity testing should be done after bacterial culture we can give a an antibiotic therapy right for acute or chronic suppuration of keratitis glandularis thank you